So get this. Imagine you're playing a shooter game, except you're not on a battlefield. You are on a farm. And your guns are vegetables, and every time you miss your shots, you can grow new vegetables. Sounds absurd, right? There's possibly no such game as that, right? Wrong. This is Shotgun Farmers, an indie game that is one of the most underrated games I've ever played, and nobody seems to be aware of this game, let alone talk about it. It seems like a silly game. You are a farmer shooting other farmers with a corn shotgun, carrot rocket launchers, asparagus snipers, and zucchini uzis. You can capture the enemy's pig, play oddball with a chicken, and play domination with a scarecrow. There's also a zombies mode where you have to fight off waves of hordes and fight a boss at the end. And this game is getting even more content in the future. Not to mention this game is also on crossplay, and it's only $10. When I first came across this game a while back, it seemed pretty interesting. But not as interesting as the story on how this game came to be. Let me introduce you to a man named Waysek Quasi, or just Quasi for short. Quasi came a long way when making this game. It started in 2015 when he decided to quit his 9 to 5 job to create video games. He taught himself how to program games through YouTube videos and weeks of practice. He first created a fighting game called Skyhook. It was a small roster of characters where the main gimmick was to use a grappling hook to travel and for combat. Unfortunately for this game, it turned out not to become a financial success like he wanted it to be. Mainly because people wanted to play Skyhook online, but it was only local multiplayer. Quasi at the time had no idea how to program his games into online multiplayer until one day a friend of his, who created the game What the Box, showed him how a solo game developer could implement online multiplayer into his game. With this new knowledge, he tried again, but this time he thought of creating a three-dimensional game. He got inspiration from many different shooter games he personally played over the years such as Splatoon, Plants vs. Zombies, and Halo. To stray from the crowd, Quasi decided he needed his shooter game to be slightly different but had a hard time coming up with this detail. What most games have in common is that you need to reload your weapon after shooting all your rounds of ammunition. Quasi decided that instead of having your gun reload, you can grow a new gun by shooting it into the ground and then harvesting the new gun to create more ammo. When I asked him personally how he came up with this idea, he had this to say. Yeah, so that was totally it. I wanted to make a shooter that was different. I felt there was no point in making a military shooter as an indie, and it wasn't my style of game either. I thought of what would be the most unlikely hero in a shooter game, and going through different ideas, I came up with farmers, then decided that their weapons should be shotguns, so I named the game Shotgun Farmers. It was originally going to be one team as rabbits stealing carrots from another team of farmers, shooting them with shotguns, and the rabbits could bury underground to get around the level. I told my friend this idea, and he said, oh, I thought you were going to say the farmers grow their shotguns, as a joke, and that moment changed my life forever. So that became the slogan, Miss Shots Grow Guns. The game started off as a prototype, which is a very blocky world similar to Minecraft. It was the earliest incarnation of the first map he made, Countryside. The main mechanic was to grow a real shotgun from the plant and harvest it from the ground to use for combat. There isn't really much to do in this prototype, however, it was the perfect blueprints for Quasi to create a much bigger game. About 50 days later, Quasi programmed a pre-alpha of the game. The art style of the game completely transformed, which first debuted the limbless characters we all know and love today. The shotgun plant was also changed to make it look like you were harvesting corn on the cob. At the time, Quasi wanted to test the game with his Twitch chat to see how he can improve the game, whether if it's bug fixes, new maps, new environment obstacles, or new code, Quasi slowly added new things to shotgun farmers with each day passing by. If you guys are curious on what the alpha and the beta days were like on Shotgun Farmers, I have a whole iceberg covering every single mystery behind the game, so check it out if you want. I also have a whole ton of content of the game on my channel, like the Farmers vs series, there's also the funny moments, there's also a tutorial on how to play the game, and... I should probably stop self-promoting, shouldn't I? Alright, let's continue. In 2016, many different YouTubers had access to the Shotgun Farmers beta, such as the Vanoss crew and Markiplier. Quasi's PR plan was to get big YouTubers to play the game and publish it onto their channels. Since he didn't have a huge budget to pay for advertisements, Quasi relied heavily on social media to help let people know of the game's existence. Sure enough, it did bring some attention to the game around that time, as more people purchased the game at its official launch on June 1st, 2017. Since then, 
The player base has continued to grow over time, with Quasi adding new content along the way. Around this time, Shotgun Farmers was designed to be a player versus player arena game, where teams could compete against each other, but it never crossed Quasi's mind to make a PvE mode. Many fans requested Quasi to add a Zombies mode to the game, similar to Call of Duty. This is where the Horde mode comes in. Unlike Call of Duty, where the zombie waves are endless, there are usually 30 or 50 waves, with the final boss to fight at the very end. One of the first maps that were added that were dedicated to the Horde mode is known as Darkseid, the first apocalyptic themed map where you and a few farmers can survive waves of the undead and fight off the evil Zombok Queen at the very end. Horde mode became so popular in the game, it became a fan favorite to the point that people wanted to see other maps turn into zombies maps and have more bosses added to the game. As the fanbase of Shotgun Farmers continuously grew, competitive tournaments became popularized due to the nature of the game being a player versus player arena game. It gave more people a reason for the community to come together and play and watch other competitors fight in a spectator mode. These tournaments became so big that the developers actually got involved in them, with Quasi making custom heads for the winners of each tournament. Since there is a competitive market for Shotgun Farmers, it gives experienced players a reason to come back to the game if they want to compete with someone equal to their skill level. In general, Shotgun Farmers provides well for both casual players and competitive players in terms of gameplay. However, around 2019, the Shotgun Farmers player base was beginning to decrease as well as the decline of game sales. Tournament events in the game were really rare since there weren't that many people that were willing to compete. Quasi's income was reliant on the game's purchases and with them declining, he was having a tough time making ends meet. He was having doubts that maybe the game wasn't going to keep him going forever, that the hype and popularity would dry out and Quasi would have to go back to get a real job. Quasi didn't let this drop in the game's support end the game entirely. As I mentioned before, Quasi relies a lot on social media to help promote the game. In December 2019, Quasi created a TikTok account to post about the newest updates on Shotgun Farmers. Due to the TikTok's generous algorithm, Quasi quickly gained a huge following with the new people discovering the game. In spring of 2020, Quasi's TikTok blew up in popularity which revived Shotgun Farmers and had new players join the game to make the community bigger. The increased player base didn't stop there. Originally Quasi was only limited to having the game on Steam and never thought of expanding the game beyond that. But with a bigger market, more people are desired to have the game played on different consoles. The game debuted on Xbox on September 25th, 2020, and whoever purchased the game on that console were rewarded with a green robot skin. Later, the game debuted on PlayStation on March 19th, 2021, with those players getting rewarded with the ninja outfit. In Halloween 2021, the second ever horde mode was added which was Graveside, as well as the introduction to shotgun skins, player titles, and custom music for the main menu. In February 2022, one of the biggest things that was eventually added to the game was the in-game items shop, where there are no microtransactions at all. You can buy new in-game skins and weapons, badges, music, titles, and hats, and you don't even have to spend a single dime on it. The only way to get the game's currency to buy things in the item shop was to grind coins just like the olden days of video games. A firing range and a tutorial voiced by Zacton was added to introduce new players to the basics of the game and to practice their shooting as well as finding golden eggs across the map. With the large amount of time Quasi had to wait for Nintendo to approve, the game finally debuted to the Nintendo Switch on September 30th, 2022 with those players being rewarded with the red and blue Neon Demon with the exclusive Neon Shovel. Throughout this time period, the developers were slowly adding new weapons to the game such as the Onionade, the Double Cobb, the Lemonade, the Beat Action Rifle, and the AK-47, as well as new maps such as the Christmas-themed map Northside, and the Summertime-themed maps such as Forestside. In 2023, Shotgun Farmers was updated into a 2.0, where Quasi debuted the Forestside Horde mode, as well as the pets who follow you around in-game. So far we have a huge roster of pets you can select. You can have meme pets like a rock, a suitcase, a gnome, a tractor, or a haystack. I also like the baby animals that you can have as pets, they're cute. My personal favorite is probably the cat pet, because not only does it reference Quasi's cat in real life, but the cat in the game reminds me of my cat that recently passed away, so it's nice to have it as a memory. The UI hub changed as well as the background in the main menu. The cattle pass was introduced as a way for people to grind the game to get all the items. 
Currently in Season 1 of the Cattle Pass, it was all Forest Side themed. In my opinion, the best part that they added to the Shotgun Farmers 2.0 update was the debut of my skins the item shop. That's right, I'm in the game. A uh, little old me. I've been playing the game for two years, and was willing to make videos and live streams for the game because I genuinely enjoyed it. I did not expect the developers to really make my own skin. I still have no clue on how I can thank Quasi for this, but I digress. In the present day, there's still so much to talk about. The item shop updates on a regular basis with new pets, new cosmetics, and tournaments happening on the regular. So far, Shotgun Farmers had two official collabs with other indie games, such as Move or Die or Atomicrops. The main reason why I love these indie games is that you can definitely see how much care they put into their games. They don't even ask for a lot with the price of their game either, unlike most AAA releases. Not to mention that there's no such thing as microtransactions. All they want for you is to pay for their game. That's not a lot if you ask me. Think of it this way. Not too many shooter games include crossplay. But this one does, and it's only run by two or three developers. Playing with friends on this game is absolutely hilarious. My buddies always had a laugh on this game whenever we blow each other up and our corpses fly across the map. In the beginning, when I first came across this game while searching for funny games on the Xbox store, my buddies and I thought this game was going to be a goofy game that isn't meant to be taken seriously. We played a few rounds as a joke to see if the game was as bad as we thought. It turned out to be the exact opposite, so much so that we kept coming back to this game to play more matches, mess around, and fight off the zombies together. I was really surprised by how many people I got interested in this game when I first started making content on it on my YouTube channel. Too many funny moments happen in this game that are completely unforgettable, like my first reaction to the Chicken Run game mode. I bet after we <gasps> what the hell? Why do I spawn right in front of them? They're all aiming their guns at me, dude! No! <laughs> When I bring this game up with new people who have never heard of Shotgun Farmers, they're very intrigued and are willing to try it out for themselves. Despite it being a simple game, there's so much you can do in the game and interact with other players in the community as well as vibe with them. At the time, I had no clue there even was a community for this game, but there is, and it's great. There are so many things that have been added to this game since I joined, I have a hard time talking about it all in this one video. Overall, I'm really proud to be part of this community despite it being really small. With a lot of love and dedication that was put into this game, it's a shame that there isn't a mainstream audience for this game. I do want Quasi to succeed because this game has so much potential to become popular in the gaming community. With new things being added to the game over time, it's only a matter of time before the game gets the recognition it deserves. This game is way too underrated. It's unbelievable. It's really why I made this video. Not only to review the game, but to spread the word out there that there is a game out there that I love and I want people to know about it and have it reach out to others and impact them the way it impacted me. Yeah, my channel isn't too fast at growing because of the variety of gameplay I used to make, but if my channel doesn't somehow succeed in the future, I want Shotgun Farmers and Quasi to succeed. He's a goaded man that deserves the amount of love he gets for making this beautiful game. So with everything on my mind being said, as well as you guys knowing the entire story, what's there in the future? Well, the future updates of Shotgun Farmers will be out of this world, and I mean that in the literal sense. It's going to be space-themed. In Shotgun Farmers Season 2, there will be cool cosmetics that are sci-fi-themed weapons, alien animals, and a brand new map being put on the moon. The Cattle Pass is going to be twice as big as the one we currently have in Season 1, and all the newest info on the game will be featured on Quasi's TikTok account, there is so much to look forward to in this game, and you never know what gets added next. One of the coolest things that was recently announced by Quasi is that Shotgun Farmers is currently launching a campaign of the Bok Bok plushie on Makeship.com, so be sure you order yours before they're all gone. Seriously, I think this plushie is going to be adorable. I already ordered mine. It's a one of a kind. My final message for this video is that the game deserves all the good things that are happening. If you want to be part of this game's history, it's never too late. This game can change you like it changed me. I have high hopes for someday for this game to be a fun, well-known game to chill out with your buddies, either in real life or online, and just enjoy yourself playing this game. Quasi's story on how far he has come as a game developer is really inspiring to me. He has never given up on his dream, and he's living in that reality. If a video game impacted your life for the better, that means it's a game that's really worth your while. That's what video games are supposed to be at the end of the day to feel good and to have fun. People say that playing video games is a waste of time, but is it really? If you're really enjoying the game and having fun, are you really wasting your time? 
Especially when you're playing a multiplayer game, when you're having fun with your buddies, or just playing with people online. It's all fun and good laughs at the very end. This game is fantastic, and it matches all of that criteria, and I highly recommend this game. Trust me, you won't forget. Don't get me wrong, I haven't sponsored for this game at all. I've just said what's on my mind because I genuinely really like this game. It's not really often you see games like this, and that's why I think that this game deserves to succeed. I'm Exploding Apple, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching.